Have you ever wondered where you really stand with God? Are you overcome with feelings of guilt because of things you've done wrong? Are you tired of religion that focuses on rules that you can't keep? Have we got good news for you? It's time to listen in on some casual conversation with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski and discover what true freedom is all about. This is Growing in Grace. We are good to go for another podcast. We call it Growing in Grace. Mike Kapler, my name. I've got Joel Brzezinski with me. And we're glad you found us. Thank you very much. Those of you who have taken the time over the years to drop us a line through through email or social media, we appreciate that. In fact, some of you probably have no idea how much that means to us because it it just kind of helps verify, you know, within our own hearts um, why we do what we do. And I mean, some of the some of the comments and, and correspondence we've had from from you out there in listener land have just been extraordinary uh, to see what God is doing in your hearts and in your lives. And we're glad to be a very small part of that because all we're really doing is trying to communicate the truth of the gospel. And then it's it's God at work in your hearts to, you know, kind of solidify and, and confirm that within your own heart and mind of, of what Jesus accomplished, the, the finished job, the completed work. He did it on our behalf. And, um, you know, I made the comment before, Joel, that Jesus didn't commission the apostles to go out and uh, try to complete a work that wasn't done yet, as if Jesus was just handing off a baton and asking them to finish the race. I know that's kind of how it's viewed, and you can paste a few scriptures together to communicate that. But really what Jesus did was he commissioned the apostles to go out and tell the world that the work is finished. And now you can kind of rest easy, as as Jesus said, and Audio Adrenaline said that too, I think, in one of their songs. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Rest easy, have no fear. I love you perfectly. And perfect uh, love casts out fear. I love it. That uh, I think that's what, you know, if we were to come up with a list of, yeah, I don't know, 25 or 50 songs that you and I played on uh, our contemporary Christian hit radio days, I, I think Rest Easy might be at that's least a, in the top 50, right? That's a good one. It, that's an idea, too. Maybe we should, you and I, and I and haven't talked about this with you at all before, but live right here as we're recording, maybe, <laughs> maybe sometime we could come up with a list and, uh, and maybe post them on the website, the videos or whatever. Just something Boy, somebody might be interested you're gonna, in. You're going to take me back a little ways. That that was uh, that was not just yesterday, you know. Yeah, no, we might have to use a few more of our brain cells to just to come up with that list. But I think we might be able to do it. Yeah, there were, there were some great ones. I mean, when you mentioned video, I mean, what, one of my favorites back in those days was uh, "Secret Ambition" from Michael yeah. W. Smith. Oh yeah, yep, that's a good one. That's a really good one. Yeah. Um, Hey, we started last, well, I shouldn't say we just started last week. We started several weeks ago before before the, it's hard to say when you're listening to these podcasts, but we just had the Christmas holiday recently and uh, we did a Christmas podcast. But um, several weeks ago, we, we started a, a little bit of a, a series here called Summarizing the Scripture. And we, we jumped into the beginning of the, the book of Genesis with Adam last week. And we're wrapping that up and we'll we'll move on. But just a couple of things maybe to to follow up with on that when it comes to Adam and Eve and, and what transpired there in, in the garden. A couple of things to be thinking about. We, we touched on some parallels uh, between Adam and Jesus last week. But um, I, I think this, this tree of the knowledge of good and evil that they ate from, that God had told them to stay away from, uh, and, and they believed the lie instead of believing what God had said to them. And therein came the sin and, and, and the shortfall and the problems that occurred after that. But this, this tree of the knowledge of, of good and evil, again, it's, it's, it's both good and evil that this tree provided the knowledge of. They were already like God. They were righteous. They were in this place of perfection. There, there may have been this dimension that God didn't want them to experience this this thing about having the knowledge of good and evil but that's what happened and so they fell and the the, the connect one one connection that we can make here between this tree because we also have the tree of life there too by the way and keep that in mind because that that's more of a representation of Jesus Christ or a type of Christ the knowledge the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was more of a a, a symbol of works and the law, which would come later. 
And one way that we can maybe connect that, because again, they, they were told to avoid that tree because it would bear fruit for death instead of fruit for God. And people who lack understanding of the gospel and the finished work of Christ, they are still to this day drawn to that type of tree, the tree of works, to try to establish themselves uh, in a better way before God instead of just trusting in what God did for them on their behalf. And so the, the Romans 3.20, we find out that the, the law brings about the knowledge of of sin. And then we have this tree called the knowledge of the tree of good and evil. And so that's a tree we want to avoid. Uh, Jesus even went into the tree business a little bit when he was teaching and, and basically described himself as the tree, the vine, and us as just the branches attached to that vine, which gives life. And and so I, j- I just thought I wanted to just kind of follow up on that, Joel, before we moved on too far. And maybe you've got some more to say about that. I do think I think that's a great point, because the the temptation that we still have today the, is similar to the temptation that Adam had. E- even though we're on this side of the cross, the temptation for Adam was to basically live by the knowledge of good and evil, if I could put it that way, rather than live by Jesus. You know, today we have... In, in Christ, you know, Paul said, I have been crucified with Christ. This is what we have now on this side of the cross. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the body, in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Not I live by a knowledge of good and evil. I believe that God from the beginning wanted Adam and Eve to live by his life, not by law, not by a knowledge of good and evil. When Christ came, died upon the cross, and was resurrected, and we were crucified with him, and we rose together with him, God took us out of that mess, so to speak, the mess of trying to live by the knowledge of good and evil, and he put us in Christ and allow, and, and put us back with the ability to live by the life of Jesus Christ. And so that's something that I think even to this day, a lot of believers, and, and I have struggled with this, even even with all that I know about the gospel and about God's grace, I still struggle with this sometimes, living by the knowledge of good and evil rather than living by, the, by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I am in him. He is in me. Uh, we have, you know, Paul says, I am, we are one spirit with God. We are one spirit with him. We have this union with him. And rather than trying to find all these rules that we're supposed to live by, the knowledge of good and evil, we're supposed to live by, and we have now the ability to live by the life of Jesus Christ that's in us. And I think that's a temptation that uh, mankind is still faced with. People in the world today have all kinds of rules. I mean, if you look at just the laws in the United States of America, there's thousands and thousands of laws. If you just go by... um, what people think is right and wrong. You're, <laughs> you're going to find people who who disagree on things. You can have one peop, one person living by this set of what's right and wrong and somebody else living by a completely different set or a different idea of what's right and wrong. Instead of where we've gone astray is instead of looking to God. I, you know, I think Adam, we were talking beforehand, Cap, I think you said that the problem was that Adam and Eve began to go elsewhere other than God as their source. And that's really what God wants to bring us back to in Christ is him as the source. Mm, that's good. Yeah. Well, it's, it's all very interesting, but I, I think the thing to, to keep in mind here is this history of Adam and, of Adam and Eve was, was not just placed in the scriptures as a story for us to look back upon. There's, there's something to be learned here. And really, it's it's a launching pad for for much of what would take place in many other parts of the scripture, many other parts related to the law and people trying to get to a place where they would be more pleasing to God, unable to do it by the standard of that law. And so um, there's so much good news to get into here. But again, what we're trying to do here with this series of summarizing the scripture is to to pull some some of the key uh, and, and I'm sure you could come up with a whole bunch of different ones. We're going to try and shrink this down to a, a handful or so um, from the Old Testament into the New and, and just try to help 
people, again, put all of this together and realize things, not that we have uh, fully understood exactly how everything played out and why it played out the way it did, but we're, we're not that good. <laughs> not yet, anyway. <laughs> Maybe many eons from now we'll, we'll have a greater understanding of that. And I'm talking, when I say eons, I mean, I'm talking about far into eternity, but um, who knows what we're going to learn after our time here on Earth. But uh, the, the point is that there are things that played out in a certain way, and uh, I think to some degree we just simply have to trust that, that God knew what was happening and, and how it was going to play out. I mean, people even today, Joel, are going to be asking, well, how come how come everything isn't just better than it is now in this fallen world? Why doesn't God just come and fix everything and and uh, we could all go on our merry way in a, in a, in a place of peace and tranquility? And, and uh, you know, I, I think the day is going to come where we'll see that that we'll see that picture. In the meantime, we're trying to paint another picture that we can relate to from the, the pages in scripture. So that's kind of a little summary of, of Adam and what took place there and how it will lead to some other things in the scripture. And I think maybe our next key component in helping to summarize the scripture is Abraham, right? Yeah, I think we'll move on to Abraham, or as he, he was first known as Abram, and then God changed his name. And a lot of the well, part of the key um, things that happened with Abraham happened when he was known as Abram. And uh, what Abraham is known for, and the reason why Paul brings him up in the scriptures later on, and, and the reason why he's brought up in the book of Hebrews, it all has to do with his faith. And it's based upon God making a promise to Abraham, and we will definitely have to get into this starting next week, but uh, just as a precursor to all this, Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him as righteousness. Here's somebody, Abraham, who lived long before the law. Now, he lived, of course, after the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, as everybody has, because Adam and Eve were the first people, and then their descendants led to Abraham. Well, anyway, God had made a promise to Abraham 430 years before the law. And what the scriptures say is that that promise supersedes the law. The promise made to Abraham cannot be annulled by the law. In other words, the law was there for a reason, and we will definitely get to the law in this series. But there was something before the law, and that was this promise that God made to Abraham and Paul makes a big deal out of saying that that promise is, is really what it's all about. That promise ended up leading to the new covenant. And so next week, we'll talk about Abraham. We'll talk about some events in his life, how he had related to God without law, but rather by faith, and how that is so key in all of this things and how, in all of this and how it pointed again, just like all of the other things that we're talking about as we summarize the scriptures here, how it all points to Jesus Christ. That's what it is all about. So stay tuned for that next week on Growing in Grace. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski. Heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. To access hundreds of past programs, visit graceroots.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.